there is one thing that binds us all Indians other than food. Everyone is just running behind from morning till evening every day to fulfill their daily chores. They work from 9 to 8, they come back home only to eat the last meal of the day, go to sleep with deep tensions about how to start the next day and how not to spend one extra penny the next month. Each one of us is just doing this all around, all around India. Why is it that 99% of our parents want their kids to be a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer and then get placed with a multinational company, earn big dough, make a lot of money, buy a car, a house, and then get married to someone whom their parents only choose for them, and then have mandatorily two kids within the first four to five years of their marriage. Wow. Why is it that whenever you see a car having met with an accident on the road, instead of doing something about it or calling an ambulance, you choose to just silently stand there and observe until a benevolent soul comes down to save that poor soul from breathing his last. Why is it that when you see a woman being ripped apart by an auto driver or a bus conductor, being a co-passenger, instead of protesting, all you do is quietly notice. Why? Because the woman doesn't know the local language. Really? Wow. Why is it that each one of us wants to get placed in a company, IT company especially in India, right? Write codes from morning 9 till evening 9, analyze data, listen to our boss taunting us like crazy, projecting revenues by 3x for the next quarter, only to not get a share of that extended revenue. You get your monthly salary, and then you go splurge that money at a nearby pub, drinking, smoking piles of cigarettes, getting high, and then the following Monday, go back to office just to repeat the entire cribbing process again and again and again and again. Oh, what is this? If not an estranged group of people who have gone astray. Have you ever imagined a naked world? Not figuratively, metaphorically, of course. <laughs> a world where nothing is hidden. Everything is right in front of you. What would it be like to go back to the olden days? No tensions, no deadlines, no perfection. Perfection. Ah, the word. The ideal, the non pareil, the creme de la creme, the ultimate. Does anything like this actually exist? I mean, how can any one of us be perfect if nature itself is evolving every second? Someone rightly once told me that the one who invented the word perfection must have been one lazy man. Because he didn't really want to do anything better, so he's like, I am perfect, I am gonna just sit at home and enjoy it for the rest of my life. If ever you find yourself in a room filled with people where you are the smartest in the lot, please do yourself a favor and walk out immediately. You know why? 
because if everyone gets to know that you are the perfect one, then you have nothing more to learn. You have shut down doors to any further learning, no more perspectives to, go, to gain. You have shut down doors for any other lessons that you can probably learn from someone who's better than you. You are doing nothing but strangling the throat of all your ambitions possible. So please walk out. I want to tell you a secret that I've not told anybody till now. The first man that I proposed to said no to me. You know why? Because according to him, strong-headed, independent, and ambitious women do not make good girlfriends or wives. I felt very bad. I must tell you, I cried a lot, huh? I cried for days and days and days. You cry, right, when you get rejected? Yeah, I cried too. It was only recently that I realized that this was possibly the greatest boon to have occurred to me in my life. Because that man was never my league. He's rotting somewhere while I'm standing here talking to you people. He rejected me because I was imperfect according to him. According to me, there are a few advantages of being imperfect. First, your thirst for doing something better never dies. Because still getting there. I'm not perfect. I'm still getting there. Second, you're always criticized. Trust me, criticism, if put to constructive use, is very healthy. And last but not the least, and the best advantage possible, according to me, if you are imperfect, you are an independent man or woman. Why? It's only a perfect man or a woman who has something to lose. I am imperfect. I have nothing to lose. I have only to gain. No perfection at all. Let me ask you a question. Um, do you know who's the father of capitalism? Anyone? OK, so to all those striking their heads and you know, racking their brains to find out, according to me, it's Charles Darwin. Capitalism, Charles Darwin, biology, evolution, economics, right? Two poles apart. I'll tell you why. Now, to all the followers of Adam Smith, the father of economics, please do not beat me to death, but I have a reasoning behind why I'm saying so. Charles Darwin founded the theory of the survival of the fittest, right? According to which, for one particular species to exist, it has to beat another one and scale up the food chain, right? As human beings, we do the same thing, don't we? We compete, we feel jealous because of which there is curiosity, there is a drive to do something better and better and better in life. If we did not have this competition, this curiosity, there would be no companies, there would be no growth, there wouldn't be anything. Evolution has wired us humans to be competitive. Hence, the birth of capitalism. So who's the father of capitalism? Charles Darwin. Let me put things into perspective. So after the Second World War, we all know, right, the Second World War happened from 1939 to 45. The world was divided into two worlds, right? When I say two worlds, I mean the capitalists and the socialists, right? So each other country chose to align to one of these superpowers. India at that point of time conceived the concept of non-alignment movement according to which 
India chose to follow its own path. And a few other countries decided to join hands with India, Egypt, Yugoslavia, to name a few. According to me, I would like to express my democratic rights here and tell you that this was the biggest mistake an independent India, after suffering 200 years of slavery, could do. Why? Now, we've all read in our civic books that you know, this was possibly the most noble thing our first prime minister could conceive, right? Had India chosen to align to the capitalist world, we would not be considered a developing country still. Our attitudes would not be corruption driven, we would not be lazy, we would not procrastinate to do something better. Companies like Ford, Coca-Cola, so on and so forth would have then been born in India. We would not be considered an agriculturally driven country. A developing nation has its own problems because of which it has to face its own consequences. The biggest consequences that a developing nation faces is that its people, the demography, we tend to become more aspirational. When you compare yourself to where a developed country stands, you want to be there. Your brain gets drained automatically. You become more aspirational. So what you do is, you aspire to dream bigger and better. What, according to you, is the greatest problem that India is facing today? According to me, it's unemployment. I know you can say terrorism, there's climate change, so on and so forth, but according to me, it's unemployment. So if there's a problem, there has to be a solution, right? How do you figure out a solution? for this problem of unemployment. There's just one way, by creating new jobs, right? How do you create new jobs? You identify a major issue that the country is facing, a major problem, a major dilemma. You figure out a solution, and then you try to implement that solution by bridging the gap between the two. In this process, you end up creating more jobs. What is this process called? Unemployment is that lock, the solution to which lies in the process of entrepreneurship. If you are an entrepreneur, you end up creating jobs for others, and you end up solving a major problem that your country, your people are facing. Entrepreneurship is the key to that lock called unemployment. Have you ever seen a duck floating on water? You must have, right? I mean, we've all been to lakes, ponds, and everywhere. Doesn't it appear extremely calm? It's only when you dive inside the water that you find with what great vigor is the duck paddling beneath just to appear that calm above. What is this? No energy, energy, no energy, energy, no energy, no energy. What is it? Contrast, right? Opposites of each other. Why do two opposite poles of a magnet attract? Why is it that some Bollywood movies do exceedingly well as compared to the rest? Bade bade desho mein aisi choti choti baate hoti rehti hai, senorita. What an epic line from an epic movie, right? Why is it that we crave a BMW and a Maruti Suzuki can also take you the same distance. Why is it that you want to buy an iPhone for 70 grand when an Intex or a Lava will enable the same messaging, the same calling for 5 grand? The answer lies in just one statement. We as human beings love to entice. Entice the eyes of others with contrast. Let me put a situation in front of you. If I were to give you one lakh rupees right here, right now, mind you, each one of you, one lakh rupees right here, right now, for listening to my talk, will you take it? Say, I. Aye. Aye. 
Now, let me put another situation in front of you. If I were to give you one lakh rupees to each one of you right here, right now, for listening to my talk, but on one condition, that you have to quit whatever you're doing or pursuing in your life currently and come follow me on a very exciting journey. Mind you, quit whatever you're doing. If you're planning for an exam, quit that exam. If you have a boyfriend slash girlfriend, quit that person and come. If you are looking for a job, quit that job and come. Whatever you're doing, if you're getting married tomorrow, quit that and come, whatever it is. How many of you would still want to come? <laughs> Whenever I've asked this question, I've always seen a radical depression in the number of eyes. Because the first one was without conditions, second one was with a condition which was preconceived by me, of course. Do you know why is it so? Why is it that we get attracted to something that's for free? And why is it that we don't like to pay for something that is not for free? That is because our mentality is set. We are risk averse. Tell me one thing. Why is it that no parent in this world would actually tell their son or daughter, I want you to be the next big creator of a company. Why would any parent have a problem if their son or daughter were to start the next Facebook, Google, or Apple from India? Unfortunately, all of us harbor this no CEO, all employees attitude. No CEO, all employees. Why? Because it's safe. There is money flowing in every month. Because of which, what happens is that we do not do what we really want to do. There's just one way you can find a solution to this. And that is by daring to bear it all to follow your own passion. I call it the naked world. I have started a movement wherein there are five things that I ask everyone to do. N, for no perfection at all. A, for aspire to dream big. K, key to the lock lies in entrepreneurship. E, entice the world with contrast. And D, dare to bear it all to follow your passion. I did this for the last three years of my life and I founded two companies, like someone said. I request you to please spread the word and do your bit in saving the world and creating a solution for the human race. Thank you and hashtag go <laughs>